Hi, this is Dominic Köppel from Kyushu University and I want to present you our paper in place bijective BWT transforms written together with Daiki Hashimoto, Diptarama and Ayumi Shinohara from Tokyo University. What we do in this talk is we focus on the BWT which is the Boris Wheeler transform and its bijective variant a bijective BWT called or shortly BBWT. So what is a BWT? Given our running example BAC, ABB, ABB, if we write it shortly as T and append a dollar sign to it, we get this shape and we assume that this dollar does not appear in the text and that the dollar is smaller than all other characters. For computing the BWT, we take all suffixes of this text and for each suffix we prepend its preceding character, like for this suffix here, let's say B. For the suffix which is the text itself, we prepend the dollar, which is the last character. Next, we align all suffixes to the left and we now sort lexicographically these suffixes. And while sorting, we move along these blue characters. Or equivalently, we sort the blue characters using the respective suffixes as their keys. Now, if we read these blue characters from top to bottom, what we obtain is the BWT. For the BBWT, the difference is that the BBWT is the BWT of the Linton factorization with respect to the omega order. Now I want to explain you what the Linton factorization is and then secondly what the omega order is. For the Linton factorization, we have to know what Linton words are. So for instance, A and AABAB are Linton words. Why are they Linton words? Because according to the definition, a word is a Linton word if it is lexicographically smaller than every proper suffix, or equivalently, if it is lexicographically smaller than every rotation of it. Counter examples are ABA, AB, and why is that? Because its rotation AA, BAB, so we just take this one and move it to the front, is smaller than this string lexicographically. And you can see that this string is this string, and this string you know that it's a Linton word, so this one cannot be a Linton word. And the other example is AB, AB. And you can see that the suffix AB is lexicographically smaller than ABAB. Now having Linton words, we can define the so-called Linton factorization, thanks to Chen and others, which is put in the, the so-called chen fox linton theorem. And what it states is that given the text T, you can factorize your text into factors T1 to TT, where each factor is a Linton word. And if you put these factors into a list, then what you get is a list of strings that are not increasing. So you get this property here, and this factorization is uniquely defined. Duval showed how to compute this factorization in linear time. As an example, we take again our string and this gives us the following Linton factorization. And we can see that all four factors are Linton words and we have this particular order of these Linton words. Second, we look at this omega order, which is defined on strings. So given two strings, u and w, we say that u is smaller than w with respect to the omega order if the infinite concatenation of u's is 
lexical graphic is smaller than the infinite concatenation of Ws. As an example, AB is lexicographically smaller than ABA, but it's contrary with respect to the omega order. And to see that, we just write the infinite concatenation of both strings and do character-wise a comparison where we end up at the fourth character with a mismatch and we can see that this A is smaller than this B, so ABA happens to be smaller than AB. Finally, we need conjugates. So, what are conjugates? We take our text T and we have characters from T1 to Tn and conjugates are cyclic shifts. So we take the first character and put it on the end, then we get this string here, we take again the first character, put it on the end, and repeat until we get this shape, and if we now again take this character and would put it to the end, we get our original string back. Now we have all ingredients to define the BBWT. So first we compute the Linton factorization of our text, and then for each Linton factor we compute all its conjugates, put these conjugates into a list, and sort this list with respect to the omega order. And we get this shape here, and now if we take the last character of each of these sorted conjugates, we get the BBWT if we read these strings from top downwards. And we can see that this omega order is important because if we would use the standard lexicographic order, this B would be on top of that. So finally we get this shape of the BBWT and if we compare that with the standard BWT then we can see that not only there appears the dollar but also the shape differs in that that we have here three A's and here three B's that are consecutive and this is not the case in the BBWT. So what are the properties of the BBWT? The first thing is that this dollar is not necessary and second, Scott and Gill found out that the BBWT is more compressible than the BWT for various inputs. Finally, we can index the BBWT to make it a full text index like the standard BWT. And it is computable in linear time with linear number of words. However, this linear number of words can be too much for a large n. And in our setting we focus on an alphabet sigma, with small sigma is the alphabet size, a text t with length n in the comparison model and aim for in-place computations between the text, the BWT and the BBWT with a working space of n log sigma pl plus order log n bits, where this n log sigma already covers the text space. Known solutions for in-place computations are due to Kroshmar and others, where they took the text and computed the BWT or restored the text from it. They used quadratic time for the construction and for the restoring they need additionally a multiplicative of n to the power of epsilon. Next one which is due to Bonomo and others can compute the PBWT. Also this is not proposed as a in place algorithm, we will later see that we can make this algorithm in place. And here this epsilon is a constant between 0 and 1. So how does the landscape of in place conversions look like? Here on the left side we have the known algorithms and we can see that we can mimic these algorithms and copy it 
to the BBWT. So we get the same time bounds as for the BWT counterpart. Additionally, we create a connection between the BWT and the BBWT with conversions running in n to the power of 2 plus epsilon time. Our tools are the forward step search and the backward step search. So for the forward search, we already know where the dollar is because it's unique in the BWT. And what we do is that we go to the left and then take, because this is the third B in F, the third B in L. And what we did is that we move one character forward, but dollar is the last character, so what we did is a rewinding. We move to the first character in the front. Next, we go to the left, and because this is the third A, we take the third A in L, and we get to the next character. And this also holds for any character, so from this A, we can get to the C, uh, which is the C. So what we did is that we took ranks and selected ranks. So we can formulate this traversal with rank and select operations. And for that, to ease the understanding, we write down here the ranks. So for instance, this A is the third A in F, or this B is the fifth B in L. And having that, we can formulate this mapping, this forward search, which we call FL mapping, by rank and selects. So for instance, if we want to go from the B to the A, what we do is that we are at the highest position, take the rank in F, and this gives us the 3 and the character A. And so we want to select A3. Uh, so this means that we go down here to the third A in L. If we want now to go back, we can use the opposite of the forward search, which is the backward search. And the idea is that we just flip the arrows. So for instance, we are here again at C and we want to go back. What we do is now that we select the first C in F and then go to the right. Then for the next step, we select the third A in F, go to the right. And finally, we select the third B in F and get the dollar back. So what we did is this is called LF mapping. And for instance, if we take here the C with rank 1, then this is the position. And what we do is that we get this position here. So we selected the first C in F, and then we move to the right. So the interesting thing is that we can rewrite these instructions because the ranks of F have a particular shape and that, that F is partitioned by the characters. So we don't need to select an arbitrary A, but we can just select the first one and then add the ranks. For instance, if we want to go to the third A, we can just go to the, four, uh, to the first A and then add 2, because we want to go to the rank 3. And we can do that, or even we can go to the place before, which means that we want to know the number of characters that are smaller than our A, and add the rank to get to, for instance, to the third A. Now, what is the time complexity for computing the backward search? So, one query for LF. 
So given that we have L stored in text space and L can answer any entry in constant time, then we can compute the rank of any character in L in linear time. We can similarly compute the cardinality of this set in linear time and so far we get LF of any position in linear time. Unfortunately, this does not work with the FL mapping because here you can see that we need the i's position of f, even if we rewrite it to this notation with the set cardinality. If we know f or the i's position of f, we can compute fl in linear time. However, this fi means actually that I want to select the i's smallest character in the text or in l. And the best known solution we are aware of that works in place takes n to the power of 1 plus epsilon time. And this is actually the time bounds where the other solution from Kroshma and others come from because they need this time times n for restoring the text. Now what follows is the following roadmap. So we first start with computing the BBWT from the text. And second, we show how to compute it from the BWT. In the first part, where we have the text given, we use the algorithm from Bonomo and others, who already compute the BBWT with the following instructions. They divide the text into Linton factors and process each Linton factor individually. So given the Linton factor Tx, starting with the leftmost one, which is the largest one, we prepend the last character of this Linton factor to the BBWT, and then use a variable that marks the position where we inserted a character. This is the last position. Now we go from right to left through this Linton factor and what we do is a backward search and the backward search should retrieve this character but it does not because we have not inserted it yet. But to actually make this, re this character retrievable we insert it exactly at this position where we would expect it. And this already solved this problem. So for our case, in our example, we have our Linton factorization and we start with inserting just the B. And now the question is how to get the full shape, so the full BBWT of our input text. So we have already B inserted and we process the next factor AC. And what we do is that we first insert the last character and then we do a LF mapping and try to find where we expect the previous characters A. And this gives us this C, the first C here, so we insert after this position the A. A more elaborated example is the next character, ABBB, and for ABB what we do is that we again prepend the B and then do a LF mapping which gives us this position here. So we insert after the second entry the this B here, do again a LF mapping get this position, so after the third position we insert the A, which is the first character of our Linton factor. To make this algorithm in place, we use a cursor that divides the already computed BWT and the text. So here we have already computed the BWT of B, and the cursor moves to the next Linton factor boundary. 
which is here for AC. And we mark in red the invalid characters and in green the characters that already correspond to a correct BBWT. And now we do a merge step, move the cursor, do a merge step and so on. So how does this merge step work? For this example we look at it in detail. And this is actually the algorithm we previously explained, that we take the last character, move it to the front, and now we look at the LF mapping of 1. So we count the number of characters smaller than b, which we call c. So c is this cardinality of the set we previously explained, which is 1 because there's just 1a. And this is the first B, so the Aleph mapping gives 2. So after the second element, we insert or move the last character there. Now again, we do an Aleph mapping, and C did not change, because there is still just one A, but the rank changed, now it's the second B, so we want now to insert the last character after the third position. And we're done. For the second part of this talk, namely how to compute the BBWT from the BBWT, we use Duval's algorithm, which, as explained in the introductory, computes the Lunden factorization. It runs in order of n TL time, where TL is the time for accessing an entry of T. Therefore, it scans linearly the text from any position ti to ti plus 1 in the beginning i is 1. Now, why is this ti important? It's important because we do not have the text available but the BWT. So what we want to do is that we want to emulate the text or more precisely this scan with the FL mapping. And with the FL mapping we need this time, so TL becomes order of n to the power of 1 plus epsilon time. And how does our algorithm now work? We have here the BWT stored in L, and what we now want to do is, we want to run Duval with the forward search, so we start at dollar, and scan forward, and Duval now reports that we have found a Lunden boundary. So we know that this B is this B here, and we have here a Lunden factor found. So our aim is now that we want to remove this Lunden factor from the BWT, and make inside uh, this BWT a cycle such that whenever we use the uh, FL mapping inside a uh, Linden factor we can never leave it. So it just wraps around. So what we want to do is we want to create a cycle from this B to itself. And the idea is that we want to let dollar no longer map to this B but now let it map to the A. So what we do is that we exchange dollar and b. And this can work just by doing that, but in this example it messes up the BWT. And why does it do that? If you you look at the ranks, how they got changed after swapping dollar and b, you can note that within this range where we swapped the characters, the ranks of all Bs inside changed. And because of that, these Bs who previously mapped with these white arrows to these Bs got changed to these red arrows. So basically what we need to do is to fix these red arrows. But now we can see that there are only three red arrows and therefore we just have to swap below the exchange 
P in the B interval to successive entries. Why does that restore the mapping? Because we basically shift downwards or upwards the ranks and this could be visualized with these parallelograms. More abstractly speaking, given our text and we have a Luton factorization of this shape where our first Linton factor starts with a character B and ends with a character E, the next one with a character X, then because of the Linton factorization property that we have this non-increasing sequence of Linton factors with respect to the lexicographic order, we know that the suffix starting at the first position is lexicographically larger than the suffix starting with the second Linton factor. And this means for the BWT that the context of the suffix that starts after E, so this context of E is lexicographically smaller than the context of dollar and this context of dollar is the suffix that starts after dollar which is here because we wrap around the suffix starting at text position one so dollar is always below e in l and we get always this shape and what we also know is because of the lf mapping that dollar maps to b and E maps to X. Now if we exchange dollar and E, what happens is that we have to take into account these E's that are between the dollar and the exchanged E. And here it's these two arrows. By having now the property that the FL mapping of dollar gives us the first character of the second Luton factor, we will never go into the first Luton factor by any character of the remaining text. So this means that when we are done with the first Luton factor, we can just run the algorithm recursively on the remaining part. So what is left is that we have still this red E because its mapping changed. And because we have just two E's in the L array in this interval of the exchanged values, what's left is that we need to do the swaps below this red E. And the number of swaps is equal to the number of elements in this interval and if we do that then we can restore the BWT. How this works in detail is explained in the paper along with a proof of it but because the proof is lengthy I won't show it here. So if this idea is a little bit complicated the next case is pretty easy because now we have already fixed the B and if we continue with the rest, then we can see here that if we now apply the FL mapping, we get to the C here, which is this part here. And now what we want to do is that we want to bend the BWT such that we can never leave the second factor. And for that, we want to swap dollar and C. And if we do that, we're already done because there is no character in between that can create that nasty arrows that we want to omit. So we're already done here. And this concludes my talk. So as open problems are can we get rid of the FL mapping because it, ru it runs in n to the power of 1 plus epsilon time? And 
just use the uh, LF mapping because it's in linear time. Second is, can we find a trade-off algorithm between time and space? And I like to ask the question whether the number of distinct Linden words of uh, text is bounded by the runs in the BWT of this text. If this would be the case, then if the number of runs in the BWT are if this is asymptotically smaller than n, we could get a run length compressed BBWT index in order of our words. So, as an overview, we have shown these white arrows, and the cyan arrows are solutions which we presented in the paper. So, thanks for listening.